Hi, this is Deb. Let me walk you through, it's at the bottom of the list, your virtual lab on dependent and independent variables. And you'll see that when I open that up, you are automatically taken to the lab. Well, if you move that out of the way, you will discover there's information here behind it that you need. You're going to need to open the dependent and independent instructions, which looks like this. And it, most importantly, is a walkthrough of how to do the calculations, but I'm going to spend some time on that today as well. And then the worksheet right here. Print on, click on that, and you end up with this. This is what you open up, fill out, and save on your computer, and then reattach. This is what you'll hand in through the assignment link. There are a lot of ways people answer these multiple choice questions. You can either just put, this isn't the right answer. You, I'm just, uh, that's, just putting some things down there. So, so you could just put the A there if you thought the answer was A. Or you could highlight it. So go across it, then go up here to the highlight. Um, how else? Well, that should get you. Don't delete all the other ones because it helps you to see. When I tell you, when I grade this, I'll tell you what was the correct answer and that way you can kind of see the choices that were there. All right? And you'll see in this handout, you've got some multiple choice. Where are you going to answer those questions? From this, the first, the lab that pops up, um, it's in the greenhouse manual. You get this out of your way and then you'll see this greenhouse manual. It's also this book on the shelf and so flip through these pages and you'll find the answers to your questions. When you have finished reading it, you put it back on the shelf. Oh, but you need to look at it again. Click on that and you'll see it again. All right. So let's talk about a couple of things here that were underneath that after it opened in a new window. Uh, there's the two things we just opened. Then, dependent variable is the responding variable in your book. They're using kind of older terminology. The independent variable is the experimental variable in your book. All right? So that should help you see that. Um, this is the video you're going to, I'm going to replace with this one, actually, because I made a mistake on the last one. So there will be a video here. This video will be there to walk you through it. <laughs> it seems kind of weird talking about the one that's there. Um, now let's look at what else is on there. On these learning units, you see that there's a table of contents on the side. And so click through those and kind of see what happens. Here is how to calculate that redu percent reduction in yield. And it's a little bit, it seems uh, kind of complex, but it's really not. And I'll walk you through this when we get there. Here's the grading rubric. Everything I put in here has a grading rubric. Uh, my screen's a little small, so you can't see it all. But you'll see how that goes. And then at the bottom, is where you will submit, you browse your computer, find your document that you have finished. Um, let's pretend, oh, that, no, that's not good. <laughs> anyway, you find your document, uh, highlight, highlight it and open it, and then submit it. And you'll see it right here. That's how you turn in your final uh, draft of that. All right, let's go to the lab now. All right, here you are again. Um, here are some of the crop, the corn that you're going to test to see how resistant it is to these uh, corn borers here. Nasty little critters, as a matter of fact. Uh, mess up a crop big time and reduce yield, which is what we're going to, which we care about as a farmer. We're going to be testing two different types of non-genetically changed, non-BT crops and two kinds of BT genetically altered crops. That's these BTs. Those are the genetically altered ones. All right. Let's go back to our worksheet so you see how this all fits in. So you finished all your questions from the handbook and now you have a large table, table one, to fill out. And you'll see that you have one, two, three, four varieties you're going to test. 
Two of them are BT, which are the genetically altered ones, and two of them are not genetically altered, the golden and the super harvest. You're going to put them in the chamber with no infestation, low infestation, and high. And there'll be three pots in the chamber, and you'll get the measurements for each of those pots after they grow and figure out the average. So this table takes quite a bit of time to finish. Let me show you how you're going to do it. Okay, when you look here, you only see two crops up here, two, excuse me, two seeds up here. And so to get different ones that you're going to test, because you're going to test golden, no infestation, low infestation, and high, super harvest with all three, and then the two BT with all three. So all you do is you come down here to the bottom right and you reset until you get the crops that you need to fill in your table. All right, you just keep resetting and it'll come up fairly randomly. All right, let's pretend we're starting with BT123. So I'm going to drag this down into chamber one and you'll see it says BT123 right there at the top left. I'm going to put it in the same one over here, the same seed in. Now, I have both of these at no infestation. That's, I only need one to do that. So I'm going to make the second one low infestation. So I drag down this jar with fewer insects in it. And you'll see it says low right here. Okay, so I now have two of those done, be, or ready to be done. BT123 at none and low. What do I do next? I grow. And time goes fast. All right, we're done. Takes 140 days. And so now we want to weigh these out. And so each one of them, each pot, we weigh separately. So we drag this yield down there. We drag the middle one down to the middle weighing dish. And we drag the last one down. And we do the same for this side and this and this. So now we have the corn, all the yield in our weighing dishes. So we need to know how much they weigh. Take them over to the scale or the balance. And the first one is 160.1. And you'll see that it's entered in here. Pot 1 yield 160.1. And so there were all three of those pots from that no infestation. And then I put in the average. To get an average, you add all three of these and divide by three. You got your average. Then I continue to do the same with BT low. I've grown those, so I get those weights and put them in here. Um, this is in grams, by the way. And um, now I need the high. I don't have it yet. How are we going to do that? I'll show you. I need to reset. Oh, and I lost my BT. Let's get him back. There he is. So I put that in the first growth chamber. And that's supposed to be high. So I have my third one for there. Now I might as well just go ahead and do golden. No. And I grow. So there I'll have my last one of BT123 and my first one of Golden. And, oh, look at that. BT123 did not do that well under high. So pretty interesting. All right. So now let's say you spent your time and you got all of these filled out. Now you're going to take this average yield and plug it into this next one right here. So I put 163.0 was my average yield for low infestation, or, or no infestation, excuse me, because if we go back and look at our instructions, remember I have it uh, over here. So go back to our class and look at the, oops, I must have changed something, calculating the percent reduction yield. So I have that done. And so when we look at our equation, if it's, it's average yield, no infestation, minus average yield, high infestation, okay, we got those two numbers. We put them in. So you do what's in the parentheses first. So 163 minus 160.6. We do that first. And that is 2.4. Then, according to our equation, it's divided by that same number again. So you take that 2.4 and divide it by 163. If you look up here, we just did this part. That's 2.4 and we're dividing by the average yield, no infestation. And that's what we got right here. 
and so it comes out to 0 0.014. Then, according to our equation, we multiply that by 100 to get our percent reduction in yield. So here it is, 0 0.0147 times 100, and round that up to 5. I will tell you that this number, 160.6 is comes out as 160.66666. So if you round that up, you get a slightly different number. I will not count it wrong. It, I, I have a range that I accept um, whether you round things up or not. So that's not a problem. I'm not concerned about that part. I just want you to see the whole process of how it works. So there you put it in there. So now you have percent reduction in yield. So that's how you finish that part. Then Let's go back to your worksheet. So now you have this all filled out with your percent reduction in yield. That means how much less that, uh, that resist, resistant this uh, species is to, or variety is, to those corn borers. All right, so um, why did you collect data from three pots? Uh, so answer these questions. Um, this one, which seed variety has the highest yield uh, under conditions of no infestation, you go back to, there you are, or there you are. You could talk about the average yield on that one. Um, just tell me what you're doing, and that works for me. Tell me the data you're referring to. Which transgenic, transgenic seed variety was most resist, resistant? That's the BT one. That's the changed one. Which one non-transgenic seed variety? That's the non-BT versions. That would be either golden or super harvest. Um, so they ask you a few more questions. And then a farmer decides to plant 90% of one field with a BT. And then the remaining 10% he wants to plant with a different seed variety. He hopes that this will slow down the evolutionary development of BT resistant insects, which is something we run into. The insects become resistant to it. So to slow that down, he's going to need to use either golden or super harvest. Look at your data and figure out which one you get a better yield from because you're a farmer and you want better yield. All right, and explain that. You're done. You save that on your computer so it's filled out, put it where you can find it, and then attach it through that link I showed you earlier. Good luck, and I hope you kind of enjoy, enjoy this uh, experience.